Stranger Things 4, Episode 8, Papa. So this episode here, pretty good. I liked it. It picks up where the previous episode ended, where Eleven has just thrown one into the upside down. And we see it from her perspective. Papa comes in, she turns around, looks at him with, you know, rage and all, and then she just collapses because she used up all of her strength to take Vecna down. <laughs> well, Henry at that point, before he became Vecna. That was his transition. Um, so they're still experimenting on Eleven, and they're trying to, you know, build up her power. Uh, Eleven realises that Hawkins is in trouble, and that if she doesn't leave right now, they're all going to fall. They're gonna, everybody's going to die. <coughs> so um, she wants to leave, whereas Martin Brenner is like, no, we're not done yet. We still need to continue. You're not strong enough. And it basically says that Vecna is a lot more powerful than she is and that she doesn't really stand much of a chance. Um, he basically wants to train her up and get her to reach her peak before they go out and fight him. And Dr. Owen is just like, you know, maybe you're overestimating back then. Maybe she can beat him right now. She beat him before. But then again, before, he wasn't as strong as he is now. And then Martin Brenner has um, Dr. Owen friggin' put it handcuffed uh, to a pipe in a cell. And um, because Dr. Owen has told Eleven to pack her stuff and get ready to leave if that's what you want to do. Whereas Martin Brenner's like, nope, nope, uh, not my watch, not happening. So, um,. <clears throat> Eleven realizes that um, Dr. Martin Brenner is basically like, you know, if you try to escape, <coughs> we'll kill Dr. Owens. And Eleven just loses her shit. Uh, she realizes that uh, Martin Brenner was the monster the whole time. He was the one that manipulated Eleven and opening the gate and everything and to look for Henry, even though he said they were looking for the Soviets. But then Eleven calls him out the shit and tears in her eyes. And then Martin Brenner, for the first time, actually has tears in his eyes because he realizes that she's not wrong. She is right. He was a monster. He was an asshole. I mean, look at the guy that they're freaking mum. Look at the bottom eyes. They're the back of shock treatment. If you want to call that treatment, I call that malpractice. I call that abuse. Fuck. Evil bastard. Uh, so the reason that uh, he was sending her into the Upside Down season one is because they were looking for Henry Beckner. Because he was a threat. Because he was dangerous. And Martin Brennan was afraid of what he might do. So, and, you know, I'm, gl I'm glad, you know, that they finally answered that there, like, what the whole point was, because season one never explored that, never explained why, and even in the Suspicious Minds novel that I read, you know, you never really find out what Martin Brenner's actual motive was, like, what, <coughs> we get that he's conducting all these experiments, but why? What is the point? What is, what is his goal? Now we know. Uh, he wants to stop Vecna. He's out to get him. Uh... And apparently he did love and care for all the children. And I think I believe that to an extent. Maybe he did. He had a bond with them all. You know, whenever the base gets attacked by the colonel, Jack, um, he does his lifter and runs out and takes bullets for her. You know, he gets shot up by the military while trying to get Eleven the hell out of there. So I, I'd say he definitely did care for her and did love her, even though what he did was immoral and evil. You know, he, he did care, because if he didn't care about her, like, I don't think he would have, you know, lifted her <coughs> and took her out. You know, he, he could have just left her to die and saved his own skin, but he didn't. You know, he, he wanted to get her out. He didn't want her to die. You know, he, he freaking protected her, and that bought her enough time to get her strength back, you know, where she was able to stand up and bring that motherfucking helicopter to the grind. <laughs> what was that wee collar thing? I thought, you know, that was something that maybe would, would restrict her powers. <coughs> But now, it must have just been a tracker or something, or maybe she couldn't have walked a few feet from the base without, I don't know, being electrocuted, having her head blown off, I don't know. Um, so they have like a wee heart to heart moment where he's like, you know, um, I always care, and like, I always love you, you're always my daughter, and then uh, he's like, please, I need you to understand, and she doesn't really answer him, she just says goodbye, <coughs> and then he dies. <laughs> uh kind of felt bad for him, kind of did, but you know, the reason I don't forget Martin Brenner is not just because of what he did to the kids, it's because of what he done to Eleven's mum. You know, he fried her brain and basically destroyed her whole life. You know, so I'll, I'll never forget Martin Brenner for that. You know, that that was the moment, you know, where I stopped rooting for the guy. I, I, I wouldn't have cared if he died. The guy was like cheering Eleven on whenever she pinned him against the Nina tank. You know, I, I started to think, you know, 
whenever he said, um, you'll soon realise the truth, I was like, okay, is there some, there's something else here he hasn't told her. And this is the part of the series or film, whenever a character says that and you want that character dead, you want the character to suffer, that's the moment in time where you don't want that character dead. Because that character is going to be useful, it's going to have a role effect, or there's going to be something else, like a red herring, you're going to find out. And it's like, God, we shouldn't have killed him, or God, we should have saved him, oh shit, he's dead now. Now what do we do? Oh fuck. That's never the, the, the regret would come in. So it's possible that the next episode might refer back to that, that scene with what he said, you know, and they're going to go, oh shit. And they kind of portray Martin Brenner, that, you know, as if he's not the bad guy. He can't even know he is the bad guy. You know, but he's going... I think it's more, he realises what he has to do, and this is the only way he can do it. Sorry, kids. <laughs> he looks like an asshole because of what he's doing, and he was an asshole, you know. And he, quiet! He was doing all this for the greater good. So yeah, Martin Renner was doing all this for the greater good. You know, he was worried about Henry, what he would do, destroy Hawkins, destroy the world. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I can I think I can understand. I can see where he was coming from. It, it definitely makes a lot more sense. And yes, this answered more questions about season one than the novel Suspicious Minds ever did. We got clarity this time. <sighs> God, I'm wearing a medium sized shirt. Sorry, when I bought this shirt I actually had quite a bit of weight on me last year. And now it's like <clears throat> but I have to go somewhere today and I have, I was told to dress smart for it. So um <laughs> next. So we've got the episode starts with the uh, Nancy running around the upside down, and Vecna is toying with her. He's showing her um, who he was, what he was doing, and what he's gonna do next. You know, we see uh, we're in the Hawkins lab, and you see, you see Martin Brenner tattooing zero zero one digits on the Henry's wrist, and then Martin Brenner looks at Nanny, Nanny, Nancy. Martin Brenner looks at Nancy and says, "There, you to take a seat." And uh, you can see his eyes are white and it's Vecna controlling him. I'm going to lose my ship. Calm down, kids. So, um... Oh, God. Now, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? <coughs> yes. So, um... <coughs> As Nancy's going around trying to find an exit in the Hawkins lab corridors, Vecna is slowly walking behind her and it's actually scary. The guy's terrifying. The guy wasn't properly shitting myself, but I was just like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, run, run, run. And it's, it's very rare that I would get that in a film and make, oh my god, he's behind you. Run, run, run. I made a fucking video. Uh, it's just the way he's slowly walking behind her and she's ripping off, you know, the, the wood the barricades on the, off the door and then runs through it and the way that uh, Vecna is walking towards her it reminds me of um, for those who have played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis and I mean the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis not the remake you know whenever Nemesis is like slowly walking towards you right? I, even though he can run and he can use weapons but it's that there it's like impending doom that dread this guy is coming towards you and you have the you can either, your fight or flight mode kicks in and you can either take him down or save your ammunition and your health and run. Sometimes I'm like, you have no choice. But that their same dread from my childhood, when I was 11 years old, I get that when I see Vecna walking towards the characters like that. And it's just, you kind of like it, but at the same time it's like, oh god, run, run, run. So, um, <coughs> some nightmarish memories, trauma in the back of my head coming through there. But it's still good. Like the guy that Jimmy Campbell Bauer that plays Vecna, superb actor, brilliant. Brilliant actor. Method acting, oh yes, he was born to play Vecna. I wish we could see more of Vecna. You know, to, like, I know we got to see more of um, one the camp before he became Vecna, but Vecna needs like an episode to himself. <laughs> what does Vecna do in his spare time? Does he eat? Does he sleep? Does he drink? Does he shit? <laughs> Does he look porn? Vecna watching Demogorgon porn. <laughs> the reason that Eleven wants to get to her friends is because she realizes that they're all going to try and take down Vecna. I want to say Vecna, it's going to be Max, Steve, Nancy, uh, Eddie, Dustin, and Shin, they, they, they're all just going to try and get explosive and get weapons and shoot the guy, blow the guy up, or chop his head off. 
and they're basically Eleven realizes that Vecna is too powerful, like he'll just wipe them all out. I mean, <laughs> they probably could take a chance and go for him, but um, she knows that without her, they're more likely gonna die, or at least one of them is. So she's that, that that's what her main motivation was to leave because her friends are gonna get themselves killed because the, they're seeing that they've seriously underestimated Vecna, and the fact that Martin Brenner. Martin, the fact that Martin Brenner, you know, was refusing to let Eleven leave, you can see why. You know, they're, they're caught. They're, you can see why they're concerned. The Colonel Jack, he was told not to, to hurt Eleven or kill her in the previous episode, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's to, he's right to kill her. I can see him being killed, maybe by Vecna or by Jim Hopper. Yes, Jim Hopper, Jim Hopper, Jim Hopper. So um, they've now uh, escaped the friggin prison and they've got their guy Yuri is still with him and the man he, he's like you know I've got a plane I can take us back to the states and then they find he has a helicopter called Katina or something like that there and <coughs> they're like what is this like I don't even know if there's enough room in that there to hold all of them will it be able to sustain their weight you know will it be able to fly the, uh, at the right altitude to escape without being shot down I don't really know much about helicopters but <coughs> You know, they're all looking at it going, what is this? And Yuri says, yeah, the helicopter's a virgin. I have never flied it before. <laughs> but it's in good condition. <clears throat> okay. Dick. The prison facility, they find these t water tanks. And they have, like, all the demogorgons inside them. I think they're dead. You know. And it's, it's almost like they're up on display. Like, they're like, trophies or something. I think one of them was being experimented on. Uh, it was sitting on an operating table and it was all cut open. I think they just wanted to see what's inside them. What makes these things tick? Where'd they come from? As you would. You know, the only way to find out what's, how something works is to take it apart and look inside. Examine, analyze, eat. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the next episode. It's like 2 hours and 20 minutes or 2 hours and 30 minutes. I might not be able to watch it all in one sitting. But oh my god, I'm looking forward to it. There's going to be a lot to take in. And this review is probably already long enough. Uh, my next review video is probably going to be massive. <laughs> well, looking forward to seeing the next episode where this is all going to go from here. How is this going to end? And I'm already, already looking forward to season 5. Who is going to die in the next episode? Who is it going to be? It could be Steve. It could be Max. It could be Nancy. I wouldn't like it to kill Hopper again. Or could it be choice? Uh, somebody, I think somebody's gonna die. One or two people. <laughs> Shit. Imagine if they killed Eleven. The show's over. Or if, or if they kill one of the characters, could they use time travel? And have and Eleven bring them back? You know, what's the significance of this grandfather clock that's been shown up? You know, that's a lot of people have felt that time travel might play a role in the season, or maybe it won't. It could have just been back this way of saying, your time's up and I'm coming for you. I don't know. We'll soon find out.